So today I am given the task of uh, presenting this abstract, which was uh, presented in the recent ASCO, adjuvant docetaxel after definitive radiotherapy for high-risk prostate cancer, a meta-analysis of the randomized clinical trials. Uh, these were the three investigators from Colombia. So uh, locally advanced uh, uh, or highly uh, high-risk localized prostate cancer has a relatively poor prognosis. Uh, the standard management usually uses uh, radiotherapy for these uh, cancers with the support of uh, long-term hormonal treatment. And improvements in local and systemic therapy are likely to be beneficial. We all know that in the uh, metastatic hormone sensitive setting in the prostate cancer, docetaxel has uh, changed the practice uh, uh, and we have uh, achieved really good outcomes by introducing docetaxel early. So likewise, uh, it goes that probably in these high risk non metastatic prostate cancer also, uh, we have to improve the outcomes and probably adding docetaxel early uh, in the adjuvant setting after radical radiotherapy might be a good idea. There have been a few uh, clinical trials uh, that have uh, addressed this issue, but the results have been inconsistent. So this meta analysis was done. It was uh, uh, you know, uh, including all randomized phase three trials, which has tested the efficacy of docetaxel after radiotherapy in high risk prostate cancer. A systematic review of uh, a different databases was conducted and three investigators independently selected all the articles and verified the inclusion criteria. 382 publications and uh, four phase three uh, randomized controlled trials were selected. That is the Stampede, RTOG 521, SPCG 13 and JETAG 12 uh, fulfilling the inclusion criteria. Uh, OS and DFS between the intervention group that is adjuvant chemotherapy with docetaxel and the control group that is without adjuvant chemotherapy and uh, only uh, uh, ADD was uh, compared by using the hazard ratio with 95% confidence intervals. And the pooled effects were calculated using the random effects or fixed effects model based on the heterogeneity of the including studies so that they would uh, sort of, uh, you know, clear any sort of uh, uh, bias that is there. Now, before we go on to the results, let us look at these uh, studies. So in all these studies, the, the high risk was based on uh, Gleason score T stage or the PSA levels. Uh, the GETEC 12 uh, was, uh, you know, had 413 patients and it gave treatment with four cycles of docetaxel estramustine. The primary endpoint was RFS and yes, the RFS was improved and in a follow-up they showed that the clinical RFS or metastasis-free survival is also better. In the RTOG 521, probably this is the uh, best evidence that we have got for adjuvant docetaxel post-RT. So it was a large trial of 600 patients and they gave six cycles of docetaxel. The primary endpoint was overall survival. And yes, uh, there was some improvement in the overall survival with a hazard of 0.7. And it was uh, uh, the, the four-year uh, uh, OS was improved uh, from 89% to 93%. Although the two sided uh, you know p value was uh, just below significance uh, in the spcg 13 it had 376 patients and yes they also used six cycles of docetaxel but the primary endpoint was again biochemical disease free survival and uh, this trial did not uh, show any improvement in the biochemical disease free survival the stampede study basically had patients mostly of metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer, but they had a handful of patients uh, where they were localized uh, high risk patients, more, around 200 patients. And again, six cycles docetaxel was used and they had a separate analysis for these patients uh, with the endpoint of RFS, which was shown to be improved. Uh, but this was not a pre-planned analysis. Again, when we look at the high risk uh, criteria that was selected for all these studies, so uh, GATO uh, trial uh, uh, took high risk patients as one or more of either Gleason's more than equal to eight, PSA more than equal to 20, uh, either T3 or T4 or node positive. The SPCG included both intermediate as well as high risk. So they had patients with uh, T2 with uh, Gleason's of seven, 
and PSA greater than 10 or a T2 with GS 8 to 10 with a PSA less than 70 or any T3. Whereas the RTOG 5 to 1, they had uh, uh, defined high risk as either with Gleason's 9 to 10 with any PSA less than 150 and any T stage, a uh, Gleason's 8 with PSA less than 20 and T stage either greater than or equal to T2, a uh, Gleason's 8 PSA 20 to 50 with any T stage or Gleason's 7 with PSA 20 to 150 and any T stage. So what we see is that there is a lot of heterogeneity so far as the high risk uh, selection is concerned, as well as the primary endpoint uh, of all these uh, studies is concerned. And there was also some heterogeneity regarding the number of cycles and the drugs used. Uh, when you look at this meta analysis, though there were two, 2034 patients who were eligible for analysis, 899 in the adjuvant docetaxel arm and uh, 1135 uh, in the ADT alone. And uh, the results showed that there was an OS benefit with docetaxel with a hazard of 0.72. And there was also a DFS benefit with docetaxel with a hazard of 0.74. A heterogeneity was not found between the included studies for overall survival, but it was found between the studies for uh, disease-free survival. And there was no publication bias as per the uh, investigators. So they concluded that this meta-analysis shows that docetaxel after definitive radiotherapy in high-risk prostate cancer is likely to be more effective than standard of care in terms of overall survival and disease-free survival. Now when we look at this abstract critically, well we have to understand that this is just an abstract, uh, the full paper is not there and hence we cannot comment on the subgroup analysis as well as the toxicities that were faced and the data somewhat looks convincing when we look at uh, all these trials but patient selection is probably the key and the high risk individuals are the only ones which are going to benefit mind you in uh, rtog there was only a four percent overall survival benefit with a short follow-up of around four years so if you look at the guidelines, the guidelines still don't universally recommend it. What they say is probably for the selected fit young patients with high risk disease. And we need more long term follow up data and further prospective studies. And one of the questions that again remains unresolved as we are seeing most of the agents are coming earlier into the disease. Uh, probably we are also going to see some abiratrone and enzalutamide also in this setting. So this is the latest ESMO June 2020 prostate cancer guidelines and this is what they state that in men with high risk localized prostate cancer, very long term follow up is needed to show survival differences. And assuming that the cooperative groups are able to collect long term data, this should be achieved uh, you know, around 2020 to 2025, somewhere in the middle. Uh, and based on the available data, <laughs> sorry. Uh, offering docetaxel based uh, 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 therapy may be a reasonable option for the younger fit men with multiple risk factors for recurrence. Thereby I conclude, thank you. And I also invite you uh, to our uh, Asian Cardio Oncology Conference Series, which is being held every Thursday till uh, uh, 5th of November, starting 7 p.m. Thank you.